Hello and a warm welcome here from Hamburg. Uh, for those who joined the live session this morning, again, my colleague, Maurice. Nice to meet you, or in some cases, nice to meet you again. So, uh, nice to have you with us. Um, like this morning, you find uh, the possibility to raise some questions in the chat and uh, we will answer this after or at the end of the session. Um, we have heard today that there were some problems in regards to the BAU online. Uh, we get a lot of phone calls, ah, I cannot log in, things like this. So. Um, what we will do in the near future, we got your email addresses. Uh, we will invite you to an additional meeting uh, which we organize and hopefully we will solve the problems there. Okay, but uh, let's start. Uh, you already have seen our small company presentation. I would I like to add a few words to who we are. We are located here in Basbüttel, close to Hamburg. The company was founded in 1978 um, as a producer of construction chemicals. We are producing only here in Hamburg. This is, has something to do with uh, production control. We have short ways into our research and development center and this is very essential for us because you can imagine if or the, the climate conditions are totally different in the north if you compare it to the south or even to Abu Dhabi or Dubai. So there we are quite flexible and we have the possibility to react on your demands. Um, we are here right now in our seminar room, which becomes suddenly a TV studio. So, like I mentioned this morning, for us, it's a little bit tricky. It is. Because we can't see you, we see your names, uh, but that's it. Um, normally, in this room, um, we give presentations. We give seminars for designers uh, which are more focused on the durability of material or of the complete building. Uh, we give trainings for applicators where we focus more on the technical details like pump technology, but also for site managers, how to supervise projects and, and injection works. Okay, um, in our second session today, we talk about acrylic gels and the sealing of structures with injection gels. So, and there I would like to hand over to you, Maurice. Thank you, Marcos, for your nice introduction. So, today's, in our second seminar, as Marcos just has mentioned, we are talking about the sealing with acrylic gels and the presentation is expected to take about 30 minutes. So there will be enough time for answering your questions afterwards. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, was the most common topic when we're talking about sealing with acrylic gels is the curtain injection. And there, just a rough overview about what we're going to talk about we are going to talk about the application ranges of the acrylic gels, what properties does the in injection gels have, and for, for sure we will also have a short introduction on the technology. Maybe we sometimes cross some regulations about that, and then especially we are going to talk about the application of the curtain injection, of sealing of expansion joints, and in the end, we're going to show you some samples. The application ranges 
are divided mostly into four parts. So the main application ranges, as mentioned just a second ago, are the curtain injection and the joint sealing, mostly expansion joints. In some cases, they can also be used for sewer repair or foundation pit sealings, but this is more or less a special solution for the acrylic jets. When we are talking about acrylic jets and sewer repair, then we are always or mostly talking, in, talking about manholes that are made out of precast elements. So there is limited space and you need to make a curtain or it's still like a curtain around these precast elements. So we will now start showing you some examples, but be aware these are like worst case scenarios. So in these cases, we are mostly talking about insurance cases and you have problems all over your construction. So as you can see here, drilling and packers have been installed on every wall section and also the bottom slip. So therefore you can see that the injection is going to be carried out all along your cellar. Usually when we are talking about the curtain injection, we are talking about underground um, buildings or cellars, car parks, every everything that is beneath ground level and where you have limited accessibility from, from the surface. Like for example, there is a building besides and you are not able to dig out and can carry out some, some ceiling works from the outside. Second example, it's more or less like the first one. Once again, you have uh, moisture coming all over the walls and also the bottom slab. Here you can see usual setup. You have rather big um, cans for the acrylic gel. You can see here somehow the mixing head. So the reaction time is rather short of these acrylic gels. So there is a need for a two component injection pump. And this is going to mix the products on the mixing head, so there is no need for you to mix the components prior to the injection. Another sample which you can see here, we are talking about a, a curtain injection underneath a bottom slab. So there is a concrete bottom slab and they wanted to achieve a curtain underneath. As you can see here, all the wet dark spots, this is not water, this is acrylic gel that comes out of the bottom slab. This is a very good visual control for you to see that the acrylic gel is not only penetrating underneath your slab, you can also see that due to its very low viscosity, the material is able to penetrate to the, to, uh, through the concrete slab. This can have for sure many reasons. The most common or the most, yeah, the most common reason for that is probably that you don't have a very good compacted or vibrated concrete. So you have a lot of honey coming inside the concrete and the material is simply looking for the easiest way to come out. And in this case, it is through the bottom slab. Prior to carrying out any injection, it's always very necessary to make an analysis of your st building state. So you need to be sure what kind of building do I have, what problems am I facing and how can I solve the situation. So first of all, for sure, you need to identify the areas to be restored. Do I only have problems on my bottom slab? Do I have problems with my upgoing wards or is there any other area to be restored? What material requirements are necessary for my construction site? And this is a part where we are always of help to you and we would be very pleased to support you to guide you to the right product choice. For sure, you also have to do some preparation works, having some injection tools, injection pump, drilling accessories and so on on site. The instructions for use for example, the spacing of drill holes and te injection technology and so on can also be discussed with us. Yes. 
for sure the injection jets, injection jets they have a certain effective range. So depending on the situation or the method of using the J, the radius or the range of the acrylic J can be different. It might also happen that when you're doing a curtain injection, for example, you have a very wet wall and you're doing the crack as a curtain injection at this wall. For sure, you are not replacing the water, you're just displacing it. It can always be that the water roots find another way and are able to go into your structure in a different way. So therefore, it might be necessary to do some other injection works afterwards. So now we're coming about the principles of injection. So what, what is our target or in general, what, what does curtain injection mean? Our target is here in that case to install a post-installed membrane behind my structure. So maybe you have had a bituminous coating on top on the outside of your wall, but it's defective. So you are going to replace it by installing another membrane. You're going to inject into the soil. In this case, it's a rather loose soil. It can also be like sand. Yeah, it can also be sand, for example. So you have your groundwater level. And what's now going to happen, you start the injection from here. You push away the water. The groundwater level is increasing. So it might happen that from the second spot, the upper level, the water is just penetrating to the upper level. So therefore, it's very necessary to build up the curtain on the entire wall surface. And the target is simply to achieve a gel layer of 10 to 15 centimeters behind your structure. It can also be less. It's just very necessary to have an overlapping of each drilling position and there is no fault zone or loose area. So if you have a uh, layer completely of the acrylic gel and it's only five centimeters in the ground, that could also be fine. So now these had been the principles of injection. And now I would like to pass on to Marcus. Okay, thank you, Maurice, so much. Um, so we have seen on the pictures uh, in uh, the samples, they have made a curtain injection beneath the slab. Yeah. And in the last picture, we have seen they have made a curtain uh, also at the wall and installed a membrane, so to say, afterwards. Uh, I would like to point out this is a very critical point. So here the distance between the packers should be less um, out of <clears throat> our experience. We say distance between the drill holes is roughly 30 to 50 centimeters. At the foot point of the wall, we, we recommend mostly the half. The reason, oh, there I was too fast. So here we go. There you see the drill holes and the red spots are the, should be the injected material. So, and there you see quite good that a smaller distance of the drill holes achieve a bigger overlap of the injected area. So what we have or what we would like to avoid is that we have here, for example, we have chosen the distance, let's say 75 centimeters, one meter, you have the risk that you uh, have uh, areas where you don't have any material. And this we have to avoid. Here you see quite good, the slab was waterproof. There was no injection necessary. Then they have made two rows in a smaller distance to have really a curtain 
at uh, the connection between the concrete slab and the wall and then the drilling was made in the normal distance 30 to 50 centimeters. Um, how much material do we need per square meter? You mentioned it before. The question is also what is the grading curve uh, of, the, uh, of the soil you have around. And here we have made a calculation. Uh, here we have quite the porosity of 30% is quite high. So this is a, is a worst case by meaning in one cubic meter we have 300 liters of cavity. What we would like to achieve is in average a curtain of 10 centimeter by meaning you need roughly <coughs> 30 liters per square meter simply for your, your calculation. Okay, let's come to the material. Let's come to the material. And there my colleague is already mixing an acrylic gel. The biggest benefit of acrylic gels are that they are super low viscous. So it's more or less like water. You see, now the viscosity of the material is increasing. You mentioned it before, the reaction time can be adjusted from a few seconds to some minutes. Now he is cracking open the glass soon and there you will see the flexibility of the material. So you can stretch it without that the material is breaking. But I think you have an example at the end of the session, uh, another video where you see it more precise. Okay, um, this picture, you see on your right side, the material is injected. And on the left side, you see that the material is going behind the wall and coming into the construction again. This is the best visual control you can ever have because material doesn't go down, material goes at the backside of the wall coming into your construction again. So there you can be 100% sure that uh, you have achieved a good curtain. To show you how it works in practice, uh, we have prepared a small video for you. So we have shortened it a little bit. Uh, we already have made the drills. Um, then the installation of the packers. By the way, you are able to reuse them if you put them after injection into some water. To the point water, we come later. And um, yeah, it's a, these packers are reusable. So you always inject from the bottom first. Replace or displace the water in the soil. There you have seen for a second the mixing head. I guess we will talk later about the mixing. Because there you see the, the components get supplied to the mixing head, get good mixed in a static mixer, and pass the packer. Like I told you before, we are able to adjust the reaction time. So, and this is one of the biggest benefits in this system, uh, because you don't want to lose material. It should be efficient. Then you are decreasing 
the uh, reaction time or sometimes it's hard to pump the material then you are increasing the reaction time uh, to have a better penetration. And maybe you have joined the session this morning. A secondary injection is always recommended. You are pushing the acrylic gel film a little bit away from the structure and place, let's say, the pure material in the gap. By the way, you are able to flush... Ah, no, no, this is more important. Um, we have opened the backside of this mock-up and there you have seen uh, a homogeneous um, membrane in the sand. Okay, um, that was the movie of the curtain injection. Maurice, now it's your turn again. Yes, so we are now more or less finished with the curtain injection and we are now going to talk about expansion joints. So maybe this is something that you probably know. You have your concrete, let's say it's a concrete slab, two parts and inside there is an expansion joint. Most common these expansion joints are sealed with a PVC water stop or a, water, a rubber water stop. So, but sometimes these existing water stops, they simply fail. And then always the question is, how are you going to seal the expansion joint afterwards? So what is important? First of all, it is important to have a material that has a very good adhesion to the crack edges. So if there is movement inside your structure that the material does not get, yeah, loosen. get loosened from the concrete. So it's very important to have a very good adhesion to the crack edges. And furthermore, they have to have a sealing capacity. First of all, the question is always or very often how to drill. The architects, the designer always have the fear that you're going, that when you're going to drill through the PVC water stop, that you cause further damages. But if the expansion joint is leaking, there is already a failure of your PVC water stop. So in our opinion, it sometimes it's also good to hit the PVC water stop with your drilling because you have seen the very low viscosity of our acrylic jets. So they are able to even penetrate along the PVC water stop and also see the failure of your PVC water stop. So you have not only filled the expansion joint, you also have sealed the failure of your PVC water stop. And what you can see underneath, the target usually should be to also achieve once again, a curtain underneath your structure. So the water is not able to get into your expansion joint at all. So the question, if you're going to drill into the, ex uh, into the PVC water stop or not, has to be decided by, by the designer. But in our opinion, it's sometimes maybe a good chance to even hit the PVC water stop. Another example can be seen here. It's a little bit different, so the PVC water stop is not in the middle of your construction. You have an outside laying PVC water stop. So in this case, you're going to drill through the concrete slab and you're placing the acrylic gel between the subbase and the concrete. So the material is going to penetrate along these joints fill up the areas along the PVC water stop and also find its way back into the expansion joint. 
just to minimize the consumption, usually we recommend to use an impact profile, which is going to be pushed or hit into the joint. So there is a limitation for the acrylic gel to a certain level. How this looks in praxis can be seen on one of the next slides. This is a picture taken out of the airport in Salzburg in Austria. So you can see here the wall and there is the roof. There was an ongoing expansion joint here that has been sealed in the way we just have seen. So the colleagues just have hammered in an impact profile and they have made some drillings into the joint. So you can see some injection packers here, there and on that point. They started to inject and you can see on the left hand side here above they have made an, an ventilation drilling. So they are able to see that the material is going to penetrate through the joint and have a visual control that the joint is completely filled. Sometimes you're in the position or in, the, in facing a problem that it's not going to be an expansion joint. It can also be a construction joint that, that has to be sealed. So you can see it here, you have your bottom slab here. Then there is a pre-installed concrete element that has been... Yeah, that nobody, has nobody knows. I, uh, until they, I never understood this because the real construction joint should be below this. Yes. But somewhere, somehow, there is a construction joint underneath. And you can, you not really can see it, but the injection took place here. And the material is going to penetrate through the joint and is coming out of the next packer, which we're open to see that the water get displaced inside the joint. Maybe you are asking yourself why it's like a blue shade here. And maybe you have seen it in the video showing the properties of our acrylic gel. In a liquid state, the acrylic gel has more or less no color or looks very similar to water. So it sometimes we recommend to use a tracing agent, a coloring agent, to color the acrylic gel into a blue shape. And then you can see that once the water or whatever comes out of the next packer, once it changes its color from nothing to a blue, blue material, then you know that this area has been injected completely with acrylic gel. And you can move on and start the injection from the next packer. So. We were talking about the flexibility of our acrylic gel and also the cap uh, capacity or the good adhesion to concrete edges and so on. Just to visual, just to show you how this really looks like, we have prepared another video in our lab. So you can see very good. You have two concrete plates. There's a very good adhesion of the acrylic gel to the crack edges. And you can see that the acrylic gel takes a lot of movement. If your building is exposed to such <laughs> movement, then you have other problems than just some expansion or construction joints. So I don't, I don't think that, that, that if you have movements like this, you don't care about uh, waterproofing any longer. Yeah. Uh, then you have to make uh, some thoughts about what happens to the stability of the building. Yes, for sure. Now you can see that you can also turn it up to 180 degree without cracking. So the adhesion and the flexibility of the product is very impressive. And there you find only a surface which is only five centimeter, right? Yes. Unbelievable.
Yeah, and I agree. If you have a situation <laughs> like this in your expansion joint, then you have other problems than ceiling or, <laughs> or <laughs> a wet basement, yes. I would say. Yeah. yeah. So, that was a short introduction on the curtain injection and the joint ceiling with acrylic gels. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Super, Maurice. Thanks a lot. Um, like uh, this morning, I have to ask my colleague, Stefan. Yep. Um, do we have some, some questions? Yes. Because, uh, I, because I need here some new glasses. I can't read it. <laughs> well, uh? First, well done, guys, for this good uh, presentation about the injection works and the materials there. Of course, I've got, I've got some questions. Um, I will pick up here one uh, main question is, uh, is it possible to do some site visits from our side to discuss the options of the material and the technical options and also uh, a site training um, during the injection works there? Yes, for sure. Especially if uh, you are in the beginning of the process. Uh, like Maurice mentioned, it is uh, absolutely necessary to have a proper planning of the drilling works, drilling uh, drill hole distance, uh, maybe some other engineers are involved in regards of, of, of the soil. We have to take a closer look at the drainage system and um, things like this. Okay. Uh, next uh, technical question, maybe Maurice uh, will answer this one. Um, is it right that the um, cleaning of the pumps and the equipment uh, can be done with water or is there any special uh, cleaner uh, necessary for that? Yes. As mentioned earlier, the application or the pump technique for these acrylic gels is a two-component based system. And the main advantage compared to other chemical injection pumps is that the acrylic gel pumps can be flushed and cleaned simply with water. So there is no need for a special cleaning agent in this case. Okay, perfect. Other questions? No, no, that's it. Uh, this morning it was more. I, I now expected a lot of more, but it's okay. Uh, is there any PU for Kurt? Uh, injection also with the, with the polyurethane. For sure, that's possible. That's possible. Maybe there we have to choose a uh, faster, a faster uh, polyurethane. We have had the case in in in, in um, Qatar uh, where we have made some some injections because there it was also the case that it was not only or well, the task was not only to seal the building; it was also to stabilize the concrete because the concrete was very poor. And yeah. um, a lot of other questions I summarize here are about the, um, let's say, the option to adjust the material. You spoke about this in your presentation. Right. Maybe you can. Yeah. Give uh, one or two. Maybe I just yeah. do that. Yeah. Maurice, yeah. Please. Yeah. So. Marcos has explained that you can rather easily adjust the reaction time of the acrylic gels. So there are mostly two ways of doing it. The one is that you have an initiator, the component B is the salt component, and you can easily adjust the reaction time by the amount of component B by the salt. If you're using less salt, then the reaction is slowed down, so you have a longer reaction time. If you're using more salt, then for sure you have more initiator and the excel or the, the reaction time is accelerated. Another solution can also be the temperature of the acrylic gel. If you are working with a gel that is cooled down, then the reaction takes simply longer than when you are working with an acrylic gel at a temperature of 20 or 30 degree. Thanks Maurice. There's also another technical question about the temperature of water in the joint during the injection. Is there a limit? Is it limited? Uh, um, can you say something about the application temperature with this material? 
yeah, if it is below zero degree, yeah, you don't have any longer water in your joint. You of have course. you have ice. Yeah, of course. So uh, <laughs> I would say minimum uh, temperature. Uh, the water has to be in a liquid state for yeah. sure. That's number one. And uh, if you are working in a very hot climate, um, then we are reducing the, uh, no, we extending the reaction time and uh, because the heat or the, the warm environment will accelerate the reaction. So there are possibilities. Yes, but I think the question is more, you are not so addicted like with an epoxy that you have plus eight degrees, for example. No, so this is no. no, absolutely not. Okay. No, the, the building temperature has to be at least one degree, but it's like not comparable to, a, for example, an epoxy resin that m most often needs eight or more degrees. So you can also apply it in winter times. Super. Good. So then Thank you for your questions. I would like to point out the next seminars, if you would like to see us tomorrow again. At 9 o'clock German time, we talk about track repair. It's an English seminar at 11, the same in German. And at 3 o'clock, the curtain injection in German. And on Friday, on Friday, we will have our seminar or live seminar for the curtain injection. And sorry, you mean consolidation ah, line? Sorry, <laughs> consolidation line. I'm I'm still in the in the curtain injection. Yeah. Um, no, for the consolidation line, and for those who would like to see Stefan. Yeah, not only hear his lovely voice, he will be on Friday together with us. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you. If, once there, again. Are, if there are further questions, don't hesitate. There you find uh, our contact details. Don't hesitate. Call us, send us an email. Yeah. And hope to talk to you soon. And don't forget that there are still the possibilities during the bow online to make one to or face to face meetings with us. So there are some time slots available on the website. Please feel free to sign up and we're going to see you soon again. Take care and stay safe. Bye bye. Bye.